Hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. This is Straight Facts Commentary where I give you my unpopular opinions in everything pop culture. So please, please, please stick around and subscribe for more. Hey y'all, I am back again with another video and in today's video, you see the title, you see the title, we are going to be doing a review on Megan Thee Stallion's new, well it's not an album, it's an act to mixtape, whatever you want to call it, you know, attached to her second installment of Megan. So we're going to be getting into that. If you're interested in her, female rap, pop conspiracy theories, trending topics, my popular opinions, whatever I feel like getting into for real, go on ahead and subscribe and let's get into this video. Okay, you guys, so we are going to get ready to get into this album mixtape act two, okay? And normally I don't do track by tracks, but lately, ever since I've been reviewing music, I've been doing track by track lately, so this one is pretty much going to be a track by track. Um, before I get into it too, I just want to say kind of how I was feeling about this before it even came out. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't necessarily in anticipation for it because I was like, okay, she just dropped the project, so do we really need an act two or, um, you know, a deluxe this large? Like, I was just like, hmm. But as I told you guys, regardless of any of that, I'm going to review whatever any of the rap girls or pop girls for that matter put out. So let's go ahead and get into the first track. So the first track I want to talk about is Bigger in Texas. And when I was listening, I was like, oh, okay. First song on the album, this song sounds familiar because it was one of the songs that she was previewing when she was saying, hey, I'm getting ready to drop a new project. And so I was like, oh, okay, this beat, one thing I will say to start is this beat was smooth as hell, wavy as shit. I was like, I know this is not a freestyle, but the beat and her flow and her cadence had like a freestyle kind of feel to it. There was a some familiarity to it. I don't know what it was. I don't know if this is a sample. If this is, um, somebody please let me know <laughs> because sometimes I can, most of the time I can recognize samples, but other of the times I can't. But yeah, when I heard the preview of this initially before the song came out, I didn't know if I was going to like it. I was like, I don't know. This kind of feels like something Megan has made before. I was just like, eh. But then after listening to the song being on, uh, you know, the project, I was like, you know what? I could actually F with this. I could actually F with this. I'm, I have to listen to it a few more times, but I feel it for the most part. Um. So anyway, moving on to the next song. This is Bourbon. And I was like, uh-oh. Uh oh, damn. <laughs> she was talking her ish on this one about haters, about people looking at all her moves, her team, talking about B words who aren't making their labels any money. I'm like, what? I was like, what? She was talking about a lot of different things that were kind of industry related in a way. And I was like, oh, normally Meg doesn't really talk too much about the industry or industry politics or other, you know, she doesn't really get into that like that when it comes to her music. Um, but she kind of felt like a YouTube commentator or something in some of the lines. It was just like, I don't know. She felt like, I felt like she was saying stuff that maybe I would say or other people would say um, in certain contexts when it comes to artists and careers and, you know, labels and just what our observations are through that type of lens. But that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, and then I also liked a lot of the bars she had on this one. She was like, um he called me like 911 I need this pussy urgent these bitches ain't built like me they trying to find a surgeon is wild <laughs> I love that bar so much um she said this pussy like a shot of bourbon I was like oh girl I liked I liked a lot of the bars on this one and I liked that she was really talking her ish and getting into certain things that I don't feel like she would in general on a track so that was cool um next is number one this <laughs> Yo, when I was listening, this is the song that got me up. I was like, what? I really got into it. Like, I really got into my vibe and my energy. And I really couldn't say for a lot of the songs on the Megan album that I felt that way. But this one, I was like, oh, this is automatically feels endemic. It automatically, I resonated with it a lot just off the bat. And I was like, girl, what? First of all, the beat is hard. The beat is hard it's like one of those songs where you listen to the beat and you make that face like that Ugh, like that oh this beat is nasty like <laughs> like that kind of face because the beat is that knocking like hold on i'm sitting like listening <laughs> in my bed and i'm like <laughs> i'm like ew this beat is sick bro it's sick it's sneezing but honestly not just the beat because sometimes you can have beats that are fire but the song itself isn't that great from the flow to the cadence to the chorus to however the you know the artist is coming on the track like 
that was a lot of songs for me on the Megan project. Like the production was sick, but the songs themselves, you know, the beats were cool, but the songs themselves were passable. And this song is good. Like her, her flow, her cadence, the beat, her energy, the chorus. Like I love the chorus. <laughs> That's the number one rule. Bad bitches choose. Never chase a nigga. Let a nigga chase you come on what like she slid she slid she slid she slid um i agree with everything that she said in the song i deeply resonated with the song the energy of it that like nigga what like like that? get out get out of my face like please like i love i loved this song it's probably one of my favorite songs on the album so far okay the next song was rock steady featuring flo millie Oh my gosh, again, I love this one too. I, and I normally don't like samples because for the most part, they're overdone, used terribly, not mixed properly. It's like, in a way, it's like, girl, what was the point of you doing the sample? Because you didn't do it any justice. You just stole the original beat and tried to rap or sing over it. And it, it didn't really make sense for you to even do. You didn't do anything to make it better. Um, I really loved how they used this song, how they remastered the beat and how they both came on it. Like, I was like, girl, what? This is great. The beat is hard, once again. Also, Flo Millie slid. Like, she slid better than I have heard her in any of her recent songs. Because if you guys are fans of Flo, she has put out some songs recently, like, within the last couple of months. But there has been nothing, really, that's caught my attention. But this song is really good. This is one of the first songs from Flo Millie that has Flo Millie on it that I actually saved. Because you know after the single that she got that hit the billboard hot 100 i forget the name of it even uh never lose me she hasn't really had a song since then for me that's really grabbed me in the puss puss real good <laughs> anybody who's first time listener is probably like girl what what but anyway um <laughs> um but yeah flo millie slid um uh, meg slid and she i thought it was funny that she was like meg said off one flow i can make an m like that was crazy but yeah, instant save for this. This was amazing. Okay, so the next track was Best Friend. Best Friend 8. I mean 8. And I was like, I knew Meg like girls already. I already knew that. But this was like the ultra confirmation for me. Uh, but also she was trying to sing on this song. And I was just like, ah. that's the only part about it. I was like, Meg isn't really a singer. Um, she's had a couple of songs where she's attempted to, but it's very clear her voice isn't made for that. Like that, that's not the type of, you know what I'm saying? Um, the only thing or complaint that I would have with this one is maybe she had a feature on here where she had somebody just doing the chorus. You know, you hire like an R&B singer to do certain shit. Um, yeah, I would have preferred that. It would have made the song flow better or something. I don't know who could have been on it. Maybe you guys can comment like who would have been a good person to sing the chorus, but the song itself is actually really good. I was just like, what? So basically she was talking about this dude, but she was also talking about, um, I guess, hooking up with this girl who th that she met in the club. I'm just like, yeah, average woman experience. Um, <laughs> or like vibing off of this girl that she, she met, whatever, which is real AF, real AF. Okay, so the next song is Right Now. Um, Meg said she thinks she's the baddest beat out right now. And I'm like, well, girl, pop your ish then. You know, I, I admire that because it's like, no matter what people say or what people do or how they think of you or whatever, you're supposed to stand in that you are the baddest beat out. Even if you're not, even if you're really not doing anything, I'm not saying Meganism, but I'm saying even if you are a girl, like, I don't know, Koi the Ray, sorry to use Koi the Ray, sorry, girl. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're supposed to stand in that. You're supposed to stand in your I'm that Venus, even if you're not on the top or even if you're not, you know, so like, or even if you're not the most perfect or whatever it might be. So I love that type of energy standing in your own and being like, girl, I'm that B and I'm better than all of y'all and I'm talented and I'm here. So, you know, suck a D. Um, so next is the Mamushi remix. And I don't like the song Mamushi. Now, <laughs> I'm getting so passionate about it because the song was freaking overplayed. It was a song off of the Megan Project, the original Megan Project that um, got the most hype, got the most attention, got the most push. She got a whole bunch of cosigns from like Asian artists off of it. And, you know, she's been doing her thing with it. Commendable. Love an anime girl. Cool. However, the song was freaking overplayed and annoying, right? But this refreshed it. And I really wasn't even going to listen to this track. I was going to completely skip it because I don't like Mamushi because it's just overplayed. But 
the lady who featured on what is her name sorry i'm calling her a lady let me get her name twice twice i was like girl what i was like okay she really refreshed the song like she made it feel fresh again she made it feel new and when it comes to remixes i wouldn't say that's the case normally remixes are just obsolete and they shouldn't be done because they just sound like trash should have left the original alone type shit and that's what i was feeling like this was going to be but I was like, oh, wow, she really ate. This might actually make me listen to this version. And I don't like the song, mind you. So that being the case, she really did her thing on it. And also it made me want to go listen to that artist like outside of the song. So it, it did a lot of things for me. I was like, damn. All right. She kind of ate. So, yeah, I would say the Mamushi remix is actually a winner for me personally when it wasn't before. OK, so moving on to T.Y. Okay, so this is TYG featuring Spirit Box, and oh my god, when she came into the track and she was like, who in the fuck do y'all bitches think? I was like, what? It first of all woke me up, because I'm like, girl, huh? <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 what's going on? I got disoriented for real, because I was like, huh, what, what is this? What is this? I didn't even know who I was listening to. I didn't even know if that was Meg at first when she first pulled up onto the track. I was like, girl, what? kept listening it's a rock beat it's a full-on rock beat with sexy ass riffs and a whole like band attached to the song i'm like girl what is going <laughs> and i love rock for y'all who actually are real real fans of this channel and who mess with me for real for real and have watched my other videos outside of i talk about music you know outside of just female rap and pop because i really love all music and rock is one of my favorite genres from emo punk to contemporary to screamo i've listened to a lot of different bands and i was like girl this is crazy i was genuinely impressed by this and it, it didn't just feel like a song that somebody was trying to make that was rock inspired it felt genuine and i was like wow this is really good like i'm sitting up here like impressed as hell by it um seriously sick beat like i was actually like not headbanging but i was like doing you know like the appreciation to rock music movements and i was like damn she really did her thing on this i was not expecting a rock fusion track like because it wasn't entirely the beat was like half rock had some like hip-hop elements infused in it and i was like this is crazy i've never heard a song like this if i'm gonna be really real so i was like yo she's really showing out i would say that song is probably like top two for me out of the tracks um that we've heard so far so next is motion um i really liked this part of the song in the middle kind of where she sped up her flow and cadence a bit and she was like going supercharged like super fast like when she was spitting um this isn't my favorite track though compared to all the others that we've heard um this song kind of feels like it would have been on the orig original megan which is fine because this is an extended version of the same album so honestly that's fine but yeah this one was just fine passable for me um the next one was fall in love okay fall in love i really like the layout of this one it felt like um she was telling a story about how she fell in love with a guy and i like the flow of it the cadence of it how it was yeah like a open book storytelling kind of format and i, I like that there's a lot of rappers who um kind of did well not a lot of rappers actually i lied but there's a few rappers who i listen to who do that so that was cool um and <laughs> the way megan is is crazy she's very descriptive like when she was talking about how she was you know effing on the dude she paints a very vivid picture i'm just like well gosh damn <laughs> every other bar i'm like damn 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 i'm like oh my gosh like this <laughs> this is crazy how she's describing the shit that's happening but anyway um i love that she's very descriptive very vivid um and i like the format overall of like this track and also the beat and also the beat and also the beat i can't say that enough when it comes to a majority of the, these tracks like the beats are crazy i don't know if they're crazier than the original megan we'll get into comparing in a second actually let me hold let me hold on that thought but anyway moving on to like a freak which i'm pretty sure is the last song on the deluxe oh no no second to last okay so i love this one it's like it, it was so nostalgic that she was rapping over the like a g6 beat i was like oh and she really slid she really really slid um the only thing i would say about this one though is because like a g6 is such an iconic song 
Um, I don't know if I would necessarily like listen to this version. I think if I heard it somewhere or around, it would make like trigger in me to want to listen to the original. Um, but maybe I would listen to this version, but I don't I don't really see myself listening to this version as much as just being like reminded of the old version. Um, but it was still good. She still slid on it. it. Wasn't bad at all. So if you want like a rap version of like a G6, it was really good. Um, and then the last track is Never Play. And you guys already know how I feel about that song because she released this song as like a promo single type of uh thing a while ago, and I did an exclusive review on that single uh, a while ago. I love, 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 love Never Play. So that adds, you know, a song to the list of songs on this project that I love. So now that we're done with all the tracks, I will get into like afterthoughts and comparisons and things like that. Yo, let me just start off by saying this. I'm pissed. (laughs) I am pissed because this was such a solid project and I'm hitting myself and you probably hear it faintly in the background because I'm just so passionate about it because it's like why is this so good why is this mixtape or this uh, act two or deluxe whatever you want to call it why is it so good why is it so good and it's pissing me off because why is this better than the original Megan why there is no reason why this shouldn't have been her album There is no reason at all why, in my opinion, maybe not everybody would agree with that, but whatever. um, There's no reason why this should not have been her original album. This was so good. Majority of this um, mixtape or deluxe or whatever you want to call it is no skips. There was only a couple of skips for me, like a couple of songs. I was like, eh, and I already told y'all what they were. It was probably like one or two. Honestly, most of these songs I could play like no problem or I I love them and there's a lot of songs that I almost already know the entire song like how and off of the Megan project I didn't have that I didn't have that feeling or connection to the project at all you know what I'm saying I'm just like wait wait hold on why this is backwards this should be this should be the album the Megan album and the second one should have been or the other the original Megan album should have been the deluxe or added extra tracks or something like that this is crazy. This is like, what is going on? Like, I don't know if she was just hearing people, like some people were talking crap about the album or something, or, you know, certain songs didn't get that much love. And she went in and recorded some shit, like recorded some more stuff. Or if this was already planned on being the the deluxe, like, but I'm just like, what is going on? Like, this is an album. Like, this is an album. Like, this feels like an album. This doesn't feel like a deluxe. This doesn't feel like a mixtape or whatever she's calling it. This is solid work. And I'm just trying to figure out what <laughs> flip. They need to flip. They need to flip. And, you know, usually this is the thing, too. Usually deluxes or whatever second editions to the album don't sell the same amount as the original it often sells less or maybe the same but probably a little bit underneath whatever the original sold girl what because people are looking at this as a deluxe so some people might not even go and listen to it some people might just be like oh okay just just extra songs no this is a really good project and i hope that it sells more than the megan album did because it deserves it it deserves it um, I, I feel like there's a lot of songs on here that have really good single potential. Like that could really like some of these feel like summer tracks. Like some, I'm like, what happened? Cause these songs could have been pushed as singles, which maybe she will push some of them as singles. She needs to, there's a lot of songs on here that could be singles. Um, that I'm just like, wait, <laughs> there's so many good songs on here. And, uh, <sighs> Like, I, I would push a lot of these. I'd push the uh, Mamushi remix again. Um, the new one, Rocksteady, Best Friend, TYG. Like, a lot of these have pushed potential. Like, there's so many. And I'm like, girl, what? She really ate this. So I'm so proud of her. I feel like she maybe heard some criticism and pushed herself a little bit with this more because it's way more diverse than the Megan album was to me outside of like the anime inspiration. There were some songs that felt like it could have been pop on the Megan album, but this just felt more diverse and it also felt more familiar. I can't 
um, describe the familiarity, but maybe you guys can. Sometimes you guys can put things into words that I don't necessarily can't find the exact thought for, but something about this felt familiar. I don't know if it felt like old Megan. I wouldn't say old Megan, but no, I wouldn't say old Megan, but it, it has a familiarity to it, but that's, that's a good thing though a good familiarity. So yeah, compared to the original Megan album, like the Megan album felt dry in comparison to this. This feels like there is feeling behind it. She really pushed herself more with this. That's what it felt like. And if she didn't push herself with this one and she was just throwing something out there, this is really good. This is really, really good. I'm really proud of her. I hope this does well though. I hope people pay attention to it. And I hope it's not just like a passing, like people don't really pay much attention because this is this is it. This is it for me. Now, after I'm done recording this and doing what I need to do, I'm actually going to go on Megan's website and see if she's selling discs of this, but like with just this on it, not the original Megan. I'm not finna buy that. But if she's selling like a CD or like something that just has these tracks on it from this album, I'm finna buy it. That's how good it was. And I don't buy CDs like that. I'm a streamer. I do stream. But if I really F with a project and I really, really love it, I will buy a physical copy because I want it in my hand. Even if I don't play the CD, I still want it. And I want to show support to the artists, um, you know, for work that I really appreciate and that I really love. And this is really it for me. This is really it. So I'm going to let y'all know. I bought Glorilla's album too, by the way, which when that comes, I'll show y'all. So y'all don't think, oh, she just, don't. no. I show my CDs. I try to do that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so yeah, I'm going to go look. But yeah, this is great. So y'all let me know how y'all feel. Um, which one did you like better between the two projects? And that's it. I will talk to y'all on the next one. Bye.